Hey there, YouTube, and welcome to, I think, episode three of the Ask Donaldson Show, where my goal is to help you take the real estate exam one time and pass it the first and only time. So the purpose of this show is for you to bring me the most common questions you have before you go take the test, and I'm going to answer them for you. Because again, it does us no good to watch you go take that test any more than one time. So the Ask Donaldson Show is really for you to help you with the real estate exam. So let's go ahead and take our first question for this show and get rolling. Can you please explain proration? There it is. Ah, proration. That's a question we get asked all the time, proration. And the reason for it is, is because a couple. Number one, it's a math question. Let's just be straight up and honest. A lot of people just tend to have that anxiety about math. The second piece of why proration is a question that causes a lot of strife is because you've got banker's year, and you've got a calendar year, and da 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 da. So actually, what I'm going to show you, if you want to pass the test, is a three-step process to pass every single proration problem the first time. Three steps, no more. If you do more than three steps, you screwed up. So three steps, pass every proration. So first of all, let's remember what proration is all about. When you're closing a real estate transaction, it generally results in the seller and the buyer. The purpose is, is that all debts, all bills, everything is paid when you walk away from the closing table, done deal. So you call them credits and debits because the seller or the buyer is getting credited certain amounts of money, the buyer is getting uh, credited or debited certain amounts of money, and essentially what that means is when they walk away, there's no invoicing them later for an expense you forgot. Or there's a bill that comes in and, oh, now i got to go track down the seller. Proration takes care of it. And the reason it's somewhat difficult is because you don't close on the first or the last day of the year or right in the middle. It can be anywhere in between. So as an example, let's just use what's coming up soon. August 1st. I'm just making up a date. And let's say August 1st is the day that we're closing this real estate transaction. And one of the most common prorations that occurs is good old-fashioned property tax. And the reason is property taxes are typically paid what we call in advance, which means the seller paid their property taxes in advance for the current calendar year. So what you guys need to understand is, is that, did I, did I miss something? No. No. Everybody's good? Yeah. Okay. That's Just checking. Huh? Oh, the next now, question? Well, on this question. Yeah, I know. Wait, if she I, had to ask you another but question. But I, I, I... Oh. <laughs> yeah, so well, that could be your question. Part. Uh, all right, so check it out. So here's how I deal with proration. If property taxes are paid in advance, let's just say it's $1,000. I'm making up numbers. So if you wonder where these are coming from, it's for the purpose of example. Whiteboard's easy. Here's how I learn proration. Step one is to know how many days each of the two parties is responsible for. And the biggest hint I can give you for the exam is that unless the problem specifically makes you use a calendar year, which it very rarely will, because in finance we use banker's years, which means 30 days in every month, 360 days in every year. That's a banker's year. You use that for your mortgage. We use that for property tax pro, uh, proration. It makes everything clean and easy. I don't care how many days are in February. Is it a leap year? Is it not a leap year? Forget all that. Banker's year, unless they tell you otherwise. So in a banker's year, I want to know how much is the seller responsible for? How much is the buyer responsible for? Because 
This is the seller from January 1st to closing day. They live there. They owe that property tax. But from August 1st on, the buyer's going to own the house. They owe their property tax back to the seller because the seller already paid the bill. So that at the end of the year, the buyer's not trying to chase down the seller. You settle it at closing. So the three steps are this. Number one, you need to count the days. So let's just say the problem asks you, how much is the buyer responsible for? So I need to know how many days is the buyer responsible for? And if it doesn't tell you otherwise, who's responsible for the day of closing? The seller. Who wakes up in the morning still owning the house? The seller. So the seller is responsible for closing day. Because I can tell you as a real estate agent, this thing may not close. So they're definitely paying the taxes because if the whole sale blows up, still their house. So unless the problem says otherwise, they are responsible for a closing date. So the buyer's days are August, the rest of August, September, October, November, December. That's what the buyer is responsible for because from August 1st on, the buyer's going to own. So what this is right here is a timeline. And it's always helped me conceptually see the year in terms of a timeline. Because then I can do this, split it in half, and I know seller and buyer. That's how I do it. So the buyer, you know how many days? 30, 30, 30, 30. So September through December is 120 days. Then August is 30 days minus closing day, so that's 29. So that's 149 days off the top of my head. Somebody with a calculator can check that. 149 days. So step one to know what the buyer owes, 149 days. I've got to pull out a calculator for the second part. Step two in proration, you need a daily rate or a daily cost. How much is this $1,000 tax bill every single day? The only way you can prorate it, what does it cost every day? So how am I going to do that? It's going to be the daily, uh, the, the total tax bill divided by 360 days. So if taxes are $1,000, then I'm just simply going to divide that by 360 days. And then I'll know what it's worth every single day. So 1,000 divided by 360 days, 2.78. So now I know 149 days, it's $2.78 a day. Step three is my favorite. I call it days times days, which is essentially multiplying how many days by the daily rate and you're finished. So, all you got to do is take 149 days, multiply that by the daily rate. The buyer, in this case, owes $414.22. Write that check, sign that check, send it to the seller at closing, and they are finished. Proration is just that simple. Count the number of days, calculate the daily rate, Multiply how many days by the daily rate and you're finished. If you wanted to check your work, you could do it in reverse. Check the seller. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then August 1st. See if you can do days and daily rate and it comes out to the total number of 1,000 for the year and you know you did it right. Proration is not that hard. It's three steps. If you're doing more than three steps, you're making it harder than it has to be. Count the number of days. Compute the daily rate multiply the two, get the problem right, go get your real estate license and move on to the fun stuff. This has been the Ask Donaldson Show. If you want to ask your burning question for the real estate exam, this is how you can do it. Ask your question on Twitter. Tweet us at Donaldson School. Again, tweet us at Donaldson School or you can email your question to ask at donaldsoneducation.com and maybe you'll see your question answered right here on the Ask Donaldson Show. See you next time.